joining us tonight, who is nice enough to give me the pronunciation. I am half Mexican, and yet I cannot pronounce this name because I'm bad Mexican that way. Viviano Villarreal from OMA is here to join us tonight. And here you go. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. I'm going to try to keep this uh, within the allocated time and as interesting as possible. I come from OMA, Office for Metropolitan Architecture. And um, in the office, we deal with a lot of different typologies. We've built from um, airports, designed airports, to all the way to villas, uh, corporate offices, like CCTV, which is one of our most known projects. Um, this is a, a kind of a view of a sample of some of our designs. And as you can see, they don't really look alike to each other. That's because in the office we work through a process and we don't really start from an envelope or with an initial idea of how we want the building to look, but we come through a conceptual process of what we want the building to function as programmatically. But very specifically, I wanted to talk today about flexibility and how we use flexibility in some projects to really play an active part in the design. And flexibility creates the outcome of how the building actually looks, works, and um, the overall experience. And particularly in theaters, OMA has done a lot of theaters uh, over its years. And I want to talk in specifically three different theaters, these three here. So the D and Charles Wiley Theater in Dallas, um, the Tepe Performing Arts Center, which is just broke ground this year, uh, which is starting construction, and the Prada Transformer in Seoul. We work, we work a lot with Prada uh, in different types of uh, things. We do their, their uh, uh, headquarter offices, we do um, the runway shows. So the first project, um, the Wiley Theater. When we first were approached by the company that is in Dallas, is one of the only companies in the States that is not based in either in California or New York, where there is more performing arts. We saw that the typical thing was happening to the theaters, where the theater, which is in the middle, here you see the stage tower, is being compressed by the back of house and the front of house. It's, the screen is a little bit pixelated, but the front of house is where you pay your ticket and when you have your lobby. And the back of house is where you have your uh, rehearsal rooms and where the actors are uh, resting in the green rooms. So the most important part of the theater itself is being kind of compressed by the other parts. So um, the um, Dallas company is an experimental theater company and they deal with black box theaters. Uh, so they need a lot of flexibility inherently in their programs. They need to be able to change from the morning from a Greek procession style uh, performance to a thrust stage in the afternoon to maybe a stadium or um, studio stage in the, in the night. Uh, so we wanted to give them really a really flexible space. So what we did is we stacked the programs that are on the, originally on the sides, typically, to top and bottom. So we moved the lobby to the ground, underground floor and all the back of house machinery and program like rehearsal rooms above the theater itself. So we created what we call Superfly, which is a super fly tower, uh, where everything that you don't need goes up into the fly tower and the lobby entrance is below. Now this does several things, but the most important thing is that it completely liberates the stage, which is everything right here, allowing you for your performance to be within the stage, but also uh, just leap out outside of the building itself. So people enter in the ground floor, underneath the ground floor, and come up to the stage, and then can exit at stage level. So here you see the building in Dallas. This is a, a render. You see the depression where people would go in. Also trucks, when they have scenography and stuff like that, enter from this depression. And here you see a play that is spilling out, and also the exit of the people can be through this part. Now, going ahead really, really quickly, this is the 3D model that we use. This is how we work. We work with very advanced 3D graphics in the office. Um, and there's a building, um, and you can see we managed to create this very big uh, empty space where all the seating can also come down and up uh, with a very innovative structure. Um, just to show you very quickly how this works, the whole facade can be opened to allow for uh, the people to walk in or walk out. Um, also, all the stage equipment, all the seating can be gone up into the fly tower, the super fly tower. And actually, the curtain itself, what we call the proscenium line, can disappear as well into the flight tower. So the Dallas Theater Company can then do side events that are not actually theater to raise extra revenue, which they really need. Now, this is what you see inside, uh, but it's actually nicer to show you a little video. It's a 30-second video, if you can put the video in the back, of how actually the seating changes, and we can see the balconies coming up and down. 
And here we go. So there's a lot of people here doing activities. Uh, we call these stagehands. But this was in a day where they had to do this really quickly for a performance. Usually only five to seven people can do all these maneuverings. Now, all these movements here allow you to go from Greek style performances to studio style performances, uh, thrust stage, etc. Here you see how the seating can come from below and then stack in. Uh, there's more than 100 combinations of seating and uh, stage uh, options, which makes the life of the directors even harder. And there we go. We can go back to the PowerPoint. So that's how that space works. And that's the Wiley in its current built environment. Here you can see the axis uh, where you go underneath into the the ground floor lobby. So that's flexible according to the stages. Now we'll see uh, flexibility according to multiple theaters. This is the Taipei Performing Arts Center, which I worked on for two years. Um, the city of Taipei called for three different theaters above an existing market, a night market there called the Shilin Market. And we took our inspiration from this, a hot pot. <laughs> we thought that if it's three theaters in one building, we should have the same thing that's happening here, which is three different types of food being cooked in one same pot. So we have three theaters, a grand theater, a playhouse, and a multi-form theater, like the Wiley, all being cooked in one cube made out of glass, which we call the magic cube. So here you can see our uh, conceptual model with all three theaters. And this is, this is the concept of the building, is that if you have three theaters and they can combine their stages, you have to think that you have a front stage, a backstage, a side stage for each theater. Uh, if you combine all three, you get what we call is the super theater. Uh, which then you can show uh, plays that have always been shown in factories or outdoors because they don't fit in a normal theater. So here's a view of how that looks. This is a 100 meter stage long uh, theater, which combines the seating of the grand theater with the seating of the multiform in one single space. Now to add to the complexity, because you have to think that we have moving walls, moving partitions, and it all has to be professionally acoustical, uh, we add a level of rigidity to this flexibility. There's a thing that we call the public loop, so without paying any tickets, 24 hours a day, there's a public escalator that takes you all through the building, front of house, back of house, whether there is an uh, opera playing or not, and you can get, see parts of this. So here's the loop. It goes up, around, and back. And very conceptually thinking, you can catch the actresses in their cigarette break. It's here these guys are catching a performance in the Presidium Playhouse for two minutes. And there's the Presidium Playhouse. It culminates in the top in a viewing deck, very tourist viewing deck with beautiful views of Taipei. And it comes back down, and this is the building. Now, for the last project, I want to show you flexibility to another extent, to the cube. Uh, this is Prada Transformer. Prada approached us with the idea of doing a pavilion that would go traveling all over the world. And they asked us for four different programs. Uh, the Waste Down program, the Cinema program, uh, Special Exhibition and Performance Venue all in one single building that has to travel all over the world. So the way we approach flexibility here, oddly enough, is to being very rigid. We designed a perfect plan for each program. So here you see the perfect plan for the waist down, the perfect plan for a cinema, et cetera, et cetera. And these are plans that then we took and created into facades, and we folded them like that. Now, to explain a little bit more graphically how that works, is that you have to place your building on the facade that you want to use, and that becomes a plan. Sounds a little bit weird. What happens is you have your waist down exhibition. This is a photo of the built project. It's in Seoul right now. A couple of cranes come by, pick up the, the whole building, turn it around, and it's a cinema. And there's the people watching the movie. Uh, if you want to have an art event, cranes come back in, pick it up, turn it around, you select your plan, and there's your art exhibition. And finally, if you have a special event, Cranes are going a little bit crazy. Put it back in and you have your performance venue. That's its current location in Seoul. It's set to travel the world. There it is at night. And that's how we deal with flexibility in the office. Thank you. <laughs>